Hi, Dr. Ron England coming to you from Daytona State College. And uh, you know, if you're watching this video, well, you know, one of my um, hobbies, I guess you could call it a hobby, is ciphers. I kind of got this into ciphers through geocaching where there's lots of ciphers to play with and break. And so I decided to put, create a little video on you know kind of how ciphers work. So if you know if you're working, if you ever done anything in cryptography, this is for people who've just seen this video for the first time. And this will be a pretty high level video. I'm going to design a cipher, but uh, I'm going to not go through a lot of the details. But the cryptography, the cryptography and setting up uh, even ciphers is pretty straightforward. You have a message you want to send. You figure out some set of rules to encode it, and then you send it. And then somewhere on the other end, you got the ability to decode it, and then you're back to the original message. Yeah, pretty easy stuff. So. Um, you know, think about this theoretically. Um, there's different ways of creating a cipher, like the Caesar cipher, where you just do um, substitution of one letter for another, which is probably the most common you see. You know, you substitute A for B and B for C and D, something like that. But and I'm going to go through kind of a different type of encryption cipher here, and uh, this is kind of like a needle in a haystack cipher. And so you need a few things. You need your needle, your haystack, and then you need some rules so you can actually encode and decode that to get that needle into the haystack and then get that needle out of the haystack. So um, I kind of talked a little bit about some common ciphers. And, you know, it's really fun if you've ever played with them, the Caesar cipher being an easy one. There's a lot of different variations of that, too. But let's start with um, this cipher right here. So uh, my haystack here, I'm just going to create a little grid here. And I've created a message here, H-E-L-L-O, hello. So there's my message, and it's going to be read going down, and I've got a row and a row and a row and a row. And um, in this case, the, um, the, the message is in just different columns. Um, it's pretty easy to see right now since there's nothing else in the other columns. And I'm actually going to do some encoding here. And this encoding works like this. Um, I've got my H, which is the start of the message, and then the next column I'm going to put a K. And what that actually means is if I were to come down to the next column here and put an H, I, J, K, well, the next letter in the cipher is in column that's offset by H, I, J, K. So I take that letter, I move over four, and there's my next letter. And if you look at this here, I've got E. Well, this would be C, D, E. So where the C is, that would be the L, which would be the next letter in the message. L, M, N, O, P. So there's the P. And in K, L, there's that O. So it's pretty straightforward. And that's just a way of actually doing the encoding, and that's really the cipher rules. You just use, in this case, the next letter in the cipher is the one that tells you where the next letter is in the next row. Well, it's kind of cool. All right, so now all you do to finish out the haystack is you simply fill in the blanks with random letters, and in this case, they're actually not random because I kind of believe in the needle in a needle stack is better, but the actual other ones also make messages, but you're just not sure which of the messages is true. So if you actually were to follow through here, you would be able to make lots of words like A, P, P, L, E, Apple, um, you know, just different things. If you, and actually, if you work through this, you'll find that I made words out of every single combination of letters you can always run through and come up with some message. All right. Take that highlighting out, and now it looks like as you got a, 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 a big grid of random letters. It would be very difficult to actually piece out what that original message is, H-E-L-L-O, unless you actually knew the deciphering rules. Well, you know what? Well, that's uh, great, but it can still be deciphered, so I'm going to go one step further. Okay, we're going to add the concept of a key to this. Now, in this case, it had a key. It was kind of an implicit key that the first letter was the start of the message, and the second letter was the first um, offset for where you're going to put the next letter. So let's add it. Now we're going to do another one where we add a key. And this one actually is one I've highlighted the, uh, the message and the key. I've kind of moved it around. But in this case, um, the key is this, this is 43. So if I were to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, there's the first letter. And so I was able to go over 1, 2, 3, there's my first offset. So how does that work? Well, how that works is if I take that first row there, one, two, three, four, letter four, letter, the H is the first letter, one, two, three, this is the offset. And if you went to the H and dropped down and said F, G, H, the next letter in the message is the, this specific E right here. And if you moved over one, two, three again, that H would then in, in turn tell you where the next letter in the row is. One thing worth noting is if you look at this original cipher, when you get to this L here, which is where you get, if you use the H there, 
um, I go over one, two, and then I jump to over here for the third. I just jump back into the same row, just move it over in the next places. So it even makes it kind of harder to even decode because you got to have those row breaks. All right, so is this really unbreakable? Nah, it's not unbreakable. You can mathematically break this. Um, but if you don't know the cipher rules, it becomes amazingly difficult to break this because you have to mathematically look for consistent patterns in the, in the rows and data. And you have to know a lot about mathematics to be able to design algorithms that can look for that. If you do know the cipher rules for this, it's not so terribly difficult to do. The thing is, is it how do um, you know how do you know the cipher rules? Well, in this case, I made this cipher up. So the only person who would know the rules is myself and anybody else I told the you know how the rules of the cipher work. You really want to see some amazingly you know interesting. If you, if this sounds interesting to you. Um, go back and um, you know just Google this. Look at the Enigma machine. Um, the Wikipedia article in the Enigma machine is actually fantastic and fascinating reading if you're into this type of stuff. And you can kind of see um, now again that was a substitution, but the substitution was amazingly difficult to figure out um, with that one. Okay, so um, now how could you actually make this so it's really almost to the point of unbreakable? Well, what you would do is you would take the original cipher and you would create a matrix cipher of it. And then, okay, to make it much more difficult, you take that cipher, you take the individual um, letters in that cipher, and you would make a second cipher from it. So notice the second cipher would be would have the action decoder would be M, K, A, H, F, M, F. And then you'd have to apply the cy cipher twice. So the first cipher decodes to this cipher, which then can be decoded by the same set of rules, can then be decoded into the original message. Well, without knowing the cipher rules and knowing that you had a double cipher, you've got almost a cipher that can't be broken. So um, now, of course, this cipher is breakable. Why? Because, well, guess what? I just gave you the rules. But it is not that tremendously difficult to come up with cipher variations and other types of ciphers that can be amazingly hard to break. Just if you apply a little bit of um, mathematics and a little bit of interesting, um, you know, have a little bit of fun with creating these types of ciphers and making messages that you have to decode. So I uh, hope you found this one interesting and actually learned a little bit about the concept of cryptology and, and ciphers and uh, good programming because if you're going to solve these very quickly, you're going to write a computer program to encode them and decode them. Thanks very much. Check out some of my other videos. I've got lots of topics.